let's assume you have purchased one of the Palo Alto firewall and you would like to configure that firewall in your network right but when this firewall comes to us they basically come with their default settings which means their default IP address and their default credentials so this firewall has the default IP address which is 192.168.1.1 and their default credentials are admin admin first let's try to understand the interfaces on this firewall so when you purchase firewall they are going to come up with the interfaces and they are totally depend upon model to model for example if you have purchased Palo Alto firewall from 200 series they are going to have the less interfaces as compared to the higher model so in this example we have one of the firewall 3020 and on this 3020 firewall we can see the interfaces which are ethernet ports which we can use for the RJ45 connectivity and there are like SAP ports which we can use for the fiber connectivity then we have HA ports this HA port basically used for the high reliability for example if you have two firewalls in your office and you would like to configure both this firewall as an active active or active standby then you can use this HA ports to have the connectivity between them now the next port is management port and console ports so these are the two ports we are going to use while we configure the firewall first time so in this topic we are going to configure management IP address on firewall which belongs to your local area network basically management IP address can be configured in two different ways first in GUI which is also known as graphical user interface and second way is to configure by using CLI also known as command line interface so let's try to understand how this firewall can be configured in both GUI and CLI now let's assume you have already configured IP address on your laptop and let's assume this is your laptop and you have configured the IP address which is 192 168 1.100 for example now all you have to do is you have to access your firewall which is like newly purchased by you and this IP address is going to come default which is 192.168.1.1 1 .1. so all you have to do is you have to access this IP in browser and you should be able to log in with its default credential but in my case what I'm doing basically I'm not using this IP so what I'm using my IP is basically right now 192.168.48.250 so for example purpose what I'm going to do I'm going to change this IP address from 250 to 200 so this is similar to this is IP for example 1.1 all I'm going to do is I'm going to change to different IP so we just going to follow the procedure is involved in order to change the IP in GUI so let's get started well this is my IP address of this Palo Alto firewall I have access by using browser so you have to use HTTPS otherwise this firewall is not going to work on HTTP so default setting for accessing this IP by using HTTPS so when you log in on your firewall first time its default credentials are admin and admin which means the username is admin and password is also admin but in my case i have already set the password so let me do the login with my own password so once you log in on your device you can also verify the ip address of this firewall in my case it is 192.168.48.250 and you can also verify some other settings like its subnet mask and the default gateway has been given on this firewall now let's change the IP address on this firewall so in order to change the IP address all you need to do is you need to follow some few basic steps so you need to go to in device and in device there is an option called setup and in setup you can also see there are like multiple options are here but the option we are going to use which is interfaces so there is the option for the management and here we basically set the IP address for the management now you have to just click on the management and you can see the already IP has been set in my case the IP address is 192.168.48.250 but if it is in your case it could be an IP address which is 1.1 .1. so all you need to do is you need to change the IP to your subnet for example your PC is in here and right now it is IP address 
1.100 so what you basically going to do you going to give the ip address which is belong to your local area network right and your local area network can be in different subnet like it can be in 10 subnet it can be in 172 series subnet or it could be in 192 series subnets depend upon which local area network subnet you're using so let's say you are in the local area network which is 10.1.1. network so you are going to assign an ip address belong to this particular subnet now let's assume you are going to assign an ip address from the 10 subnet and you have decided to assign ip address on your firewall which is 10.1.1.100 right so after changing the ip address you have to define which subnet mask your network belong to as well as the gateway and this gateway can be maybe 10.1.1.1 in your case maybe on your switch so once this ip address is defined you need to save the changes and after saving the changes you are basically going to lose connectivity with this firewall so you need to again change your ip address from 192 to 10 series then only you can access this firewall with this new ip address so in our demonstration what we're going to do we're going to change the ip address from 250 to 200 for example it's going to be 200 my own local area network ip address so let's see how we can change the ip address so what i'm going to do i'm going to change the ip address which was 250 i'm going to make the changes by 200 the subnet mask in my case is same and the same is default gateway but there are some settings you need to like uh, make sure are enabled for example this https setting this is required because when you are going to access your firewall this https setting is required otherwise in browser you won't be able to access this firewall you should not use the http because it's not recommended as per the security reason so you should always be using the https same applies for the ssh service you should be enabling this service because when you are going to configure your firewall you might require some troubleshooting with this firewall for example but you would like to change your ip address in cli or you like to make sure if all the interfaces are working fine so the ssh service is required in that particular case the other services required which is ping so once you enable the ping you would be able to understand whether your management ip address is working or not right since we have made these necessary changes now let's save the settings so all we need to do is we need to just press ok and after that it is going to be a commit without making commit the changes are not going to save on this firewall right so i'm going to do commit and the commit will take a little bit of time depend upon the firewall model you're using if it is like uh, palo alto 200 series is going to be quite slow if it is like higher version is going to be very fast so it's totally depend upon which model basically you are using as you can see my changes has been stuck at 98 percent this is because i have changed the ip address from 48 to 50 to 48 200 and this might going to happen in your case as well you might be wondering why it's not going to 100 percent right so in that case what is happening it has changed its ip address from 250 to 200 well in order to understand whether the ip address on this firewall is changed or not all you need to do is you need to ping this ip address right which is new ip address belong to your local area network but you won't be able to ping this ip address because your pc is directly connected to the management port on this firewall and you had assigned the ip address on your pc which was 192.168.1.100 for example and since they are in different subnet for example firewall ip was given 10.1.1 dot hundred so this ip of course is not going to ping from 192 series to 10 series so you need to change your ip address back to the 10 series belong to your local area network so for example i'm going to change my ip address back to on pc um 100 to 200 for example now after changing the ip address you need to make sure whether this ip is getting ping or not once it is able to ping you are good to go in my case i'm going to ping this ip address which is 192.168.48.200 now let's verify whether we are able to ping this new ip address or not well in order to ping the new ip address i'm going to go in command prompt and let's ping 192.168.48.200 
dot two hundred. Okay, I'm able to ping this new IP address. Now let's try to access the IP address. As you can still verify, the ninety-eight percent has not been gone to hundred percent at all, right? So that is the reason because it has changed its IP address. Now let's try to access this firewall with new IP address, which is two hundred. As you can see, like now we have got prompt on new IP address. Now let's use the credentials. In your case, it could be still admin admin. So in my case, I'm going to use my own password. Okay, since we are in here, let's verify a few things. Now, as you can see, the IP address is been set on this firewall from 250 to 200. So that is how we can change the IP address for this management interface in GUI or graphical user interface. Now, let's try to change the IP address of this firewall by using CLI or command line interface. Well, there are the two ways you can change the IP address in command prompt. For example, you have your PC in here where you can connect a console cable directly to your PC. In this case, you won't require any IP address changes on your PC because this is going to communicate on COM port. It could be COM1, COM2 or any COM port is being assigned in your PC. So that is the way you can change the IP address by using the console access. The other way you can change the IP address by using the management port. For example, you are going to connect the LAN interface on this firewall. In that case, you are going to connect the RJ45 cable on your LAN port of this PC and you need to assign the IP address which belong to the management. Since it will be your first time, so the IP address is going to be for your firewall which is 192.168.1.1, right? So you need to provide the same subnet IP address which is for example 100. Then from your PC you can use the some software which is maybe called PuTTY. And in PuTTY you can access this IP address by using the SSH. So it doesn't matter which method you follow depend upon your convenient. Let's say we are using console cable in order to access this firewall. So let's try to change IP address by using the console port. After taking the console or SSH access by using the management port, you need to provide the credential. In your case, it could be admin admin, but in my case, the password is different. So I'm going to provide my own password. So after accessing this firewall, we need to use command which is show interface management, which is going to provide us the IP address being assigned on this management. Well, in my case, I had assigned the IP address. 48.200 so this time i'm going to change the ip address something different now this time i'm changing the ip address from 48.200 to 48.130 now let's change the ip address on this firewall by using the command line interface in your case the commands are going to be same just it depends upon which ip address you are setting based upon your local area network now let's change the ip address to change the ip address commands are quite simple First, you need to go into the configuration mode. That is how you can change the IP address. So the command is set space device config, then the system, and then the IP address. After using this, you need to provide the IP address or which IP address you would like to change as per your local area network. I'm going to change the IP address which is 192.168.48.130. Then after that we need to set the subnet mask on this firewall. So in my case subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. And then after that we need to set the default gateway. So we need to assign default gateway which is 192. 168.48.1. Lastly, if you want to assign the DNS on this firewall, then you can also assign DNS from here. Otherwise, once the IP address has been set, you can also define DNS uh, later on. 
Now let's say you would like to assign DNS belong to google.com which is 8.8.8.8 right. So the command to DNS setting is DNS settings then you need to define which would be your primary and secondary DNS. So first you need to provide servers and then you need to define which is your primary server. In my case primary server for example going to be google so 8.8.8.8 so this is my DNS. So what we have basically did here, we have given the new IP address which is 48.130, the subnet mask, gateway and DNS. So that is it, we need to just press enter. But this is not the final change because in Palo Alto Firewall, in order to save change, you need to do the commit command. In GUI, we did the commit in graphical user interface, right? So in CLI, you need to use command which is commit. So after making this commit, it's going to make some progress and it is going to show you the how much percentage it has completed. As you can see, it's completed 55, 75. Now here we see some difference because in GUI we saw it had stuck at 98%, right? It because we lost connectivity with management interface. But in this scenario, we are using console cable. So it is not connected to any network cable. That is the reason we see the progress is 100%. And we can still access this firewall because we are not connected via network cable but it is console cable. So that is the advantage of using console access because if you make any mistake so you still have the access on this firewall. Well to verify whether the new IP address has been changed or not let's go to command prompt and do the ping 192.168.48.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.